Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wolfpacker Show. My name is Ethan McDowell. I am here with Noah Fleischman, and we are back for another game preview episode. It is week eight, already week eight, Noah. NC State is one week away from its first bye week, which is wild to say. This is, I believe Dave Doran said, it's the longest he's coached before having a bye week. So NC State's marathon start to the season ends this Saturday in Berkeley, California. NC State hasn't played a game, keyword played a game, Noah, on the West Coast since 1960. Of course, they were supposed to play in the Holiday Bowl a few years ago, but that was um, canceled after UCLA withdrew on game day. But enough about that. NC State plays Cal in Berkeley this week. The um, Bears are 3-3 three and three this season, have lost their past three matchups, all to ACC opponents. NC State is 3-4 and four and has lost their past two. This is a battle between two winless teams in the ACC, and uh, we're going to preview all of it. But before we do so, I want to quickly mention that we're both reporters for the Wolfpacker.com. That is NC State's site on the On3 network. You can find us at thewolfpacker.com again, and that's whether you're looking for football analysis, recruiting scoops, baseball intel. Noah just published a great story. He was able to talk to Elliot Avon and get some baseball intel, which was super awesome. And then also, it's almost basketball season, so we're going to have full coverage, full season previews coming out over the next couple weeks, and then they start playing exhibition games, and we're going to be there, have full coverage of those as well before we really dive into crossover season. It's going to be a busy second half of the fall, and there's no better place to be than the Wolfpacker.com. Right now, you can get an annual subscription for 50% off. So highly recommend going and checking that out. comes out to, I believe, right around $5 a month. Um, For the amount of scoops and analysis and intel we're posting on the Wolfpacker.com, that makes it well worth it. So go check us out. And today... We're going to dive into NC State's matchup with Cal Noah. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about the Golden Bears and the Wolf Pack. Cal was favored by double digits in this game. Line opened at 10 and a half, correct? Or climbed to 10 and a half at one point. And now it's around, it's right at 10. Um, NC State coming off of losses to Wake Forest and Syracuse, finishing a homestand one and two. And now they have to hit the road. And that's a long road trip, Noah. So I wanted to get your thoughts. Just initial thoughts on this matchup. How do you think NC State matches up against California? One, a team that I think it's safe to say is better than their record suggests. Yeah, this is a Cal team that's also 0-3 in the league, but they've lost their last three games by a combined seven points. Yeah. Seven points, Ethan. They led Miami by 25 and ended up losing the game late with game day in town. But this is a Cal team that's really good, especially on defense. They force turnovers. They lead the country with 13 interceptions. One of their corners alone has six. He leads the country as an individual. This is honestly not a great matchup for NC State, who has struggled to take care of the football. C.J. Bailey has thrown four picks. Um, You know, he's a freshman. It's going to happen. But against a team like Gal, who's going to try to force interceptions, that might be a problem. NC State's also had a problem holding on to the football. It's fumbled the ball 13 times. It's lost seven of those, which is one off the FBS lead for most lost fumbles this year. So turnovers have been a big problem, and that's what cost them against Syracuse, a game they should have won instead of losing by seven. They should have won easily by seven or 10 or 14. That was a game they they had a chance to win a game by a lot, and and they just didn't execute. Now they go to Cal, leave on Thursday after practice, hit the road, get there out there early, get acclimated to Berkeley for their Saturday afternoon clash with the Bears. But, Ethan, I'm not sure. Like it's, It's one of those games I don't think they match up well offensive versus defense. Cal's, D, Cal's offense, though, has given up 24 sacks, which NC State's defensive line should be looking at shops to get. They got pressure against Kyle McCord, who Syracuse's offensive line was their weakness a, a week ago. Syracuse used quick passing to get out of that and avoid most of that. Cal might try to take the same page out of the playbook. We'll see. But overall, 3,000 miles away from home, cross-country flight, five-hour flight, their longest flight of the year. First time going west of the Mississippi River since 2002 to play Texas Tech, who Robert and I and was on staff there with the Red Raiders at the time. But, yeah, long time since they've gone west. Half the team wasn't even born. I don't want to make anyone feel old, but half the team wasn't even born in 2002. <laughs> I mean, how old were you, Noah, in 2002? I was two years old. Yeah, I was one, so there you go. <laughs> but um, I totally agree. This is this is a bad matchup for NC State. Um the margin for error is going to be super, super small for this team. 
Uh, like you said, like the interception issues have been there for um, CJ Bailey, but that those are growing pains you're going to experience with the freshman QB. The bigger problem is the fumbles, right? And um, Cal hasn't actually forced that many fumbles this year. They've recovered recovered just one. And it, so <laughs> the big part of that is NC State can't give them any more because they're going to make the most of the chances they get to force turnovers in the passing game, right? Like No Williams, heck of a cornerback. He is a really, really great player. You mentioned him a few minutes ago. He had six interceptions through six games. Come on, leads the league in not, with nine defended passes as well. I mean, in the ACC, he, he again, paces the, the league with six picks. The next closest defender has three. So he's doubling up the second place defender in the ACC. He's a tall, physical corner at six foot one, 200 pounds. And, um, you know, he's also the team's kickoff returner. He has two total touchdowns this year, one on a pick six and one on a kickoff return. So he's a really, really good player. Teams have thrown at him 33 times and they've completed 16 attempts. So he, whoever he matches up against, um, whether it's Noah Rogers or um, you know Dakari Collins, Wesley Grimes, uh, he is he does play primarily against outside receivers. So do expect him to match up against one of those guys. It's going to be a tough day because teams have tried to challenge him with little to no success. Um, elsewhere on their defense, uh, senior linebacker Teddy Buchanan. Really good player. He's their leading tackler. A transfer from UC Davis. You know, if you go and look at his stats, Noah, uh, his stats at UC Davis weren't even like, they don't really even jump off the page. Like he's about to reach a career high, likely in this game. I think he needs five tackles to do it. And, um, but he's having a great year. He's playing the will linebacker spot. Um, Cal's a team that, you know, they play uh, a three, three defense. So he'll play the will linebacker spot and, uh, He's really, really solid, has had no fewer than eight tackles in a game this year. And uh, they again, people have tried him in pass coverage as well. And he's only allowed 10 receptions on 21 targets for 80 yards. So he's a really, really good coverage linebacker as well. There's some really impressive playmakers on this defense overall. And uh, like we said, they're going to they're opportunistic, man. They're going to take advantage of any opportunity an opposing team gives them. And they've played against some good offenses in the past couple weeks. Uh, and they held Pitt, uh, the number 20 team in the country, one of the you know surprises in the ACC so far this year. On the road, they held Pitt to 17 points. That was their low, lowest scoring performance of the year. So it's going to be a tough matchup against them, man. It, it's going – NC State has to play nearly mistake-free football – and if they don't play mistake-free football, the defense is going to have to play one of its best games of the year. It will, and that's just a fact. And NC State leans on its defense a lot, and it, it worked against Northern Illinois. They, they played really, really well in that game, but not so much a week ago. Kyle McCord was able to throw the ball all over the place. They're playing a quarterback in Fernando Mendoza who's not Kyle McCord, but he's still pretty accurate. Solid. He only has a couple interceptions this, in, this season. He's a solid quarterback that can make the throws when given time. And, you know, most of these quarterbacks in the ACC, if you give them enough time to throw the ball, they're going to make the throw. That's just a matter of what the talent level in this league is. So that's important. But the defense needs to show up. Corners, everybody, they're going to be shorthanded for the first half. Tamarcus Cooley will miss the first half from his targeting suspension. We'll see what they do there. They get creative at, at nickel. We might see the return of Brian Cisse, which would free up a lot of that because he could either play nickel or Devon Marshall could play nickel for the first half. If not, it might still get interesting and play Devon Marshall at nickel and, and play somebody else outside, like a Jackson Vick. Or Cooley cool, cool, if he's healthy. Or Cooley Cooley. Or you could really go and get really creative and play Zayo Crowell at nickel, which he played well yeah, in yeah. run support. Wasn't tested much in the past game in those last 20 snaps he played. But I think NC State wants to give him a chance. He's practiced well. He, he proved he can at least – set the edge and run sport, which has been a problem for defensive backs this year at NC State. Yeah. So we'll see what they do. But they've got options. Dave Dorn, though, on his radio show yesterday, was not happy with the targeting rule, not happy with the targeting call against Tamarcus Cooley either. It was technically by definition, you know, a crown of a helmet hitting a crown of a helmet. He wasn't too pleased with the suspension. He doesn't – he's not a very um, – proponent for spending a player for it he he gets you know the 15 yard penalty he doesn't understand the ejection suspension for a penalty that's not malicious he does believe that if there's a malicious hit suspending and ejecting is fine but Dave Dorn wants to see that rule change outside the point though 
NC State's defense needs to show up if they want to win the game. And I do think Kamal Bonner played well too at linebacker in his first start. And he's going to be leaning on pretty heavily again against Cal. Yeah, the, the secondary situation is going to be really interesting to monitor because they'll have Aiden White in one of the cornerback spots, but we really have no idea. Um, Dave Dorn isn't going to talk about injuries at all this year, so we're not going to have really that good of a picture of who's playing until game days. And um, like last week, they were missing Cisse and Coley, and that put them in a tough spot. And we should also mention, if you haven't been following this situation, um, Jihad Carter's not on the team anymore. Um, the Ohio State transfer, you know, came to NC State this year and it just hasn't worked out. He's not with the team anymore. So that hurts the Wolfpack's depth at nickel. In terms of, you know, going from him to, to Marcus Cooley, that had already happened. Cooley had taken his job and it was playing really, really well. So I think Cooley is actually an upgrade over Jihad Carter in the starting role, but it certainly hurts the depth and it certainly hurts when you have Cooley suspended for a half. Um, Crowell did well. Like you said, in four tackles, one for loss. Um, he just It was when you know, Syracuse was really trying to milk the clock and they weren't throwing the ball a ton and he didn't really get tested much in pass coverage. So that's a question mark for sure. And like you said, I think it's going to be interesting to see how creative they get with that spot. And a lot of it's going to depend on, um, on you know, just the health of the team and who's available. Because, yeah, you're right. If Cissé plays, that kind of changes things because he's someone that can move inside and out at will and we're going to see how deep nc state really is in the secondary it's something we we the coaches touted before the season something we touted on this podcast and that's going to get put to the test uh and it's going to be needed because something i did not expect to say about this cal team in the preseason is they rely heavily on their passing game noah uh because their rushing attack has been limited this year because of injuries to Jaden Ott, their star running back, all ACC um, you know, preseason pick. Did you pick him to be the ACC player of the year this year? I know no, I put I put back. Kim Ward. I think I made him ACC running back, like top okay. ACC running back. But he's questionable, I believe, for this weekend's game. Yeah, yeah. Their, their coach, um, Justin Wilcox, um, listed him as day-to-day going into this game. So last year... He was one of the best running backs in the country. Picked up 1,300 yards on the ground, 12 touchdowns. And this year, he's been banged up. He's only averaging 2.9 yards per carry over four games played. And uh, he's only averaging 2.14 yards after contact. So it's been a slow year so far for the star running back. And they, they still have a decent rushing attack, but they rely pretty much on, on their passing attack and through – um, Fernando Mendoza, who, you know, th- this Cal team is almost reminiscent of the team, the NC State teams of the past, where their offense is doing just enough to play complementary football and um, help the defense's great elite efforts um, as they continue to force turnovers and keep opposing offenses contained. But Mendoza has been really solid, Noah. He started eight games last year and threw 14 touchdowns, but also 10 picks. And this year, cut way down on the turnovers and has been super productive. Um, the redshirt sophomore is completing 66.5% of his passes for 1,449 yards, eight touchdowns, and three picks. Um, he'll air the ball out at six foot five. He has an arm of uh, around 14% of his throws are traveling 20 yards or more downfield. So he is not going to hesitate to throw the ball and he, he, he can move a little bit. It does not show up in the box score. Um, but he has 114 yards rushing on scramble attempts. Um, but if you go and look at just his, you know, rushing yards after you account for the sacks, it's not pretty. Because you mentioned it, Noah, giving up 24 sacks this year. That's the worst number in the ACC. Their pass defense is bad. When you look at um, Cal's offense, what kind of stands out about um, about the Golden Bears? I really think it's the sack numbers. I think that's really something that Dave Dewar's going to have circled. They they like to key in on teams' weaknesses. And he, he talked about Syracuse having the bad offensive line they thought they could really, you know, take advantage of. They didn't. And now I think they feel like they had a missed opportunity against Syracuse and being able to force pressure. They had, you know, 10 quarterback pressures in the game or 12 quarterback pressures in the game. Just couldn't really make something happen with it. I think that's been a big emphasis this week of making something happen, getting to Fernando Mendoza, either whether it's either sacking him or hitting him after he throws. 
They need to let them know they're there. And I think that's really big. We talk about quarterback hits and, you know, it's a stat that they track. I think it's big. And one, you're letting the quarterback know you're there. But two, it's kind of rattling them a little bit. And I think NC State's defense will want to do that this weekend. Yeah. Like you said, they finished 10 quarterback hurries against Syracuse. And I thought they pressured him really well. The blitzes were effective. But Kyle McCord's a good quarterback. He was making quick decisions. And I'm getting the ball out. And you know it was a similar thing against Wake Forest where they were sending a lot of pressure, but Wake Forest got the ball out quick. It's clear that this defense's best shot is when it's sending pressure. That pressure just has to get home. And it, it needs to get home against Cal because I think this is going to – if this is a game that NC State wins, it has to be an ugly game. It has to be an absolute just um, battle of defenses in this matchup. And um, I picked in our scouting report up on the Wolfpacker.com – I picked Davin Van as someone who could really change the game. He is number six in the ACC right now with um, eight tackles for loss. In NC State's three-man front, that is super impressive. He's having a great year. Um, but they, NC State moves him around a lot. He'll play on both sides. He'll line up at nose tackle every now and then. And he is really, really solid <laughs> And against an offensive line that is far from solid. None of Cal's full-time starters along the offensive line have an above-average pro football-focused pass protection grade. And a couple of them have really, really struggled. Their left guard, Rush Rymar, and right tackle TJ Session have accounted for 10 combined sacks this year, Noah. Uh, Cal's offensive line, through six games, has allowed 75 pressures. So, hey, NC State fans, you complain about NC State's offensive line. It could be a lot worse. That is not good. That's 12.5 per contest. They're giving up in pressures. But it, Cal is the worst pass-blocking team in the ACC, and NC State absolutely needs to take care of that. The defensive line winning one-on-one -on -one battles, getting pass, protect, um, pass pressures and disrupting has been an issue at times this year. And it can't be an issue. You need to see Brandon Cleveland winning on the inside, which I thought he did a good job of last week. You need to see Trevally Price winning. He, again, did a good job of that last week. You need to see that become a trend. Um, someone that I think we should shout out is DJ Jackson. His speed, maybe, when they're in passing downs, could be really useful in this game. And I'm looking forward to seeing how the defensive line can perform and step up and make some plays because they, they need them to. And if, if they can get to the quarterback consistently, NC State will have a chance in this game. If they don't, I don't think they will. Yeah, I think that I'm in the same line of thinking. And DJ Jackson, as you said, he made his first career tackle, first career sack, did all that. Um, he's a guy who's in, has had injuries, ridden, riddled his entire career. He's finally healthy and playing well, and he adds a new dimension to this defensive line. Brandon Cleveland's a, a big guy that can get through. But DJ Jackson's an undersized nose tackle that has twitchiness and can get around centers. And I think that also helps Brandon Cleveland, too, because centers have to, you know, adjust to both guys. And if they keep rotating them in, they've got, D, you know, have Brandon Cleveland in front of you for a few snaps. DJ Jackson comes in, the center's got to speed up, then back to Brandon Cleveland, and he can still power through. So it's a good matchup to have, and we'll see what they can do uh, this weekend in Berkeley. Yeah, another one more quick note on the um, Cal offense. Uh, last week, NC State gave up six catches for 74 yards on seven targets to Aronde Gadsden in the second. Syracuse's star tight end, NC State will have to deal with another really good tight end this week. Um, Jack Injuries for Cal is a redshirt sophomore, and he's their leading receiver. It's 19 receptions, 265 yards. Uh, eight Cal receivers have at least nine receptions and 100 yards rec receiving this year, so it's a really balanced passing attack. But injuries is the most consistent of the of that group. At six foot four, he is the highest graded receiver on the team, and that's because he catches everything thrown in his direction. So far this season, he has twenty targets, and he has caught nineteen of them. Zero drops so far for the tight end, and um, yeah, he's really good. He's someone that they're going to get the ball to and let him make plays after the catch. Right now, his average depth of target is just five point two yards, so they're they're throwing him the ball and screens and quick passes. But um, he's picking up 9.1 yards after the catch. So he's someone that they're going to try to get the ball a lot. And something that Syracuse had a lot of success with against NC State was isolating the linebackers in pass coverage, right? Um, I believe Devon Betty gave up, what, what was it, like eight receptions on eight targets. And that was the product of Syracuse just doing a good job of putting him in positions where he had to, you know, def defend in space and coverage and uh, 
they made the most out of that. So I'm expecting we're going to see Cal try to do similar stuff now that that's on film. And that's going to be a big matchup. Can NC State slow down the tight end? That was an issue for a lot of last year. We I feel like we talked a lot about tight end matchups, but this year it hasn't been as much of a factor. I think it could be on Saturday for sure. Oh, and no, for the second consecutive week, man, we got to talk about kickers. Um, oh, how's, boy. How, how's kicking situation is not good. You, you, we all saw against Syracuse. We mentioned it in the pre, pre preview podcast, and it ended up playing a huge role in that game. There were missed field goals by Syracuse in that contest, and Cal has a similarly poor situation. Um, I, when I was researching uh, the Golden Bears, I looked up Ryan Coe, their place kicker. Um, and the name sounded familiar, man, and I couldn't figure out where it was. It's because he used to kick for UNC. He's a UNC transfer um, and has also played for Cincinnati in Delaware. He is on his fourth school, and this year is not going well for him so far. He has made three of four attempts, attempts inside 30 yards, Noah. Beyond that range, he is four of 10. He's, he, he has hit a 51-yard field goal, so he has you know the leg to get it there but he has been super inaccurate, super inconsistent so far this season. And uh, that's something where, you know, NC State, I thought the defense did what it needed to do in terms of bending and not breaking against Syracuse. I think it has a better shot to just get some more straight up stops, but if it can force Cal into some field goal opportunities, it could, that, those, you know, drives deep in the opposing territory could, you could still end them in a stop because their kicking situation is not good. So we'll see how that turns out. But, um, you know, another game where special teams could be a huge factor for the pack. All right, Noah, let's talk a little bit about predictions. Let's dive into what we think is actually going to happen in this game. Each week, we like to pick the leading rusher, receiver, and tackler in the game before giving out our final score predictions and picking a winner. Um, so far this year, I think we've gotten most of our predictions right as far as the final results. Um, we were on top of it with the Syracuse game. No, your final score prediction was only seven points away from reality, which was impressive. And um, so I'm going to throw to you immediately, and I'm going to have you pick NC State's leading rusher for this game. It was a balanced attack last week. Um, Hollywood, uh, Kendrick Raphael, and Jordan Waters ended up about equal in terms of um, snaps played and carries. But who do you see coming out with the edge this week? Yeah, I think it'll be Kendrick Raphael. I think he will. He's established himself as the number one running back, getting the ball in his hands. I do think Hollywood Smothers is the most explosive player in that room. He's coming back from a groin injury that we learned on the Dave Doan radio show. So I don't think they're going to use him as much as a running back per se. I think they'll want him in the past game. He he showed why he can make guys miss as you know in the open field. So I'll give give me Kendrick Raphael to lead the running back room, the team in rushing. But I do think that Hollywood will lead that position group as a receiving back. If that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And I'm going to pick um, Hollywood to lead him in rushing too. Uh, and I agree the volume's not going to be very low, but he's so explosive. I'm going to bank on him breaking off some 30 plus yard rush because holy crap, man, that long reception in the fourth quarter against Syracuse, you saw the flashes right there. You saw what made him such a special recruit coming out of high school. You saw why his final four coming out of high school was NC State, Florida State, Alabama, and Oklahoma. There's a reason folks all over the country wanted him to come play for their school. He is a game changer. He had three catches for 87 yards, 72 yards of that came on one play where he broke like five tackles. So he, he is an explosive, hard to bring down running back. And like you said, dealing with a groin injury, you don't want to you know overload him and re-aggravate that. But I thought he's seven total touches and he ends up with over 100 all-purpose yards. So really, really good player. Uh, I think as a redshirt freshman, his his ceiling is absurdly high. Uh, and I'm going to pick him to lead the team in rushing in this game because he's going to break off another big play and um, you know, keep the pack, keep the pack, you know, give that rushing offense life where it has sometimes lacked that in its previous games this year. What about receiving? Um, last game, Hollywood did almost led the team in receiving, uh, but Noah Rogers ended up pacing the team thanks to a 75-yard um, touchdown reception. He ended up with four catches for 95 yards. Uh, who do you think is going to lead the team this week? 
Yeah, I'm going to go with a big body tight end, Justin Jolie. I think this is a game that really he could lead them in receiving. One, they're going to avoid the corners that are really, really good at getting the ball back for Cal. And I think they're going to go over the yeah. middle. And, and he's going to be a mismatch. He's a mismatch for almost every team they play um, with guys that, that get on him. I think CJ made a really good throw to him on fourth and 12 in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. Threw it no, between three crazy. defenders, yeah. fit it in there. Jolie took a shot, held onto the ball, moved the chains. I think that may have been CJ's like one of his better plays of the game, just period on the great throw, great catch, everything. Give me Justin Jolie. He also leads. Um, he's you know one of the top tight ends in contested catches. That's going to come in big this weekend. He can go up and get it, as he told you, Ethan, this week. What's the secret to that? It's going up and just going the ball more than everybody ball. else, right? He he he's got this mindset of this ball is mine. I'm going to get it, and it pays off. I think that's why he leads the team in receiving. He's not going to lead them in receptions. But I do think he's going to get a couple big gash plays, which he's he's pretty good at doing and getting those 25, 30 yard catches. And you know, he's making the most of every single target he's getting. I think in the past two games, it's like six targets, six receptions for him, right? <laughs> and a touchdown. Yeah. So or two he, touchdowns. And it, it doesn't matter if it's in traffic or what, but he, he has just been outstanding. So I, I think he is a star for the Wolfpack. Um, wouldn't mind seeing him get a little more volume in the passing game as well. Um, but yeah, like you said, I asked him about it in a press conference this week, just what's the secret to winning those contested catches. And he said, go up there and catch it. Just want it more than the other, than the opponent. And I think he has been really, really good. I think it's a good pick. I th I would, I am very confidently going to say it, the leading receiver for this game will be an outside inside receiver. I'm going to pick KC, but, um, I could easily see it being Joe Lee. I, I think, uh, like you said, I think it's going to be a lot of quick game stuff for NC State just because of um, the outside receivers. It's going to be tough to get the ball to them just because of how great Cal's cornerback situation is. But I think you're going to be able to get KC the ball and let him work. And and their defense has quite a few missed tackles this year. That 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 is not the strong suit of their defense. So I think you could see – you know, maybe Casey breaking off, getting some yards after the catch and making things happen that way. But big, big day for the inside receivers. We'll, we'll, we'll stick with that for sure. What about um leading tackler? Of course, NC State's leading tackler um, or leading tackler for the season previously, Caden Fordham, is out for the year. That's a huge blow to this team. Um, Devon Betty slid inside to Mike, um, did a solid job in the middle of the defense. Uh, and it was kind of tackling by committee against Syracuse. A lot of folks ended up with um, high tackling numbers, but Noah, who do you think is going to take home the tackling crown in week eight? I'm with DK Kaufman. He led them in tackles last week. You know, he had 11, was close to his career high. I do think he's the guy that just flies all around the field. He hits hard. He, he's, he just has a nose for the ball. Give me DK Kaufman, who Joe DeForest said this week, is like one of the best note takers he's ever had. As a, you know, in 30 years of taking notes, studying, learning, he wants to play in the next level. There's an opportunity to prove consistent tackling. That was the one thing he wanted to sure up this year was his tackling. And so far, so good for DK Kong. That's cool. Uh, that's a fun niche compliment to get the best note taker. I feel like that, that that's high praise from a coach, right? Yeah. But um, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go with uh, Sean Brown here. I think, it could be a day where he's finishing with a few tackles for loss because they're going to have to send him. They're going to have to blitz the guy. That's where he is playing his best football. And I think that's where he's going to have an opportunity to make some plays. Uh, but Noah, would you listen to a, a Kamal Bonner prediction for to lead the team in tackling? I thought he looked good. I thought he looked really good in his first start. Nine total tackles. He was flying around making plays, uh, making tackles for loss. I thought he was excellent in his starting debut. He was. He looked really, really comfortable out there. He is a guy that will be a guy on this defense in yeah, the future. No like, this is his opportunity to like get his feet wet starting these last you know six total games that he'll play. But I think he is a guy that they can build this linebacker room around when it gets to that point. Redshirt freshman did not look like a redshirt freshman out there. Devon Betty even said that too. Um, he's really comfortable. This is a guy who played safety up until his senior year of high school. He transitioned to linebacker senior year. Had 125 total tackles yeah. that year. Like, this is a guy who can tackle people. That's not an issue. So, I buy it. I think I do think he will lead them in tackles in one of these last five games they've got left on the schedule. Wouldn't be shocked at all. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I mean, if, if, if anyone watching or listening to this wants just a fun, like, five minutes out of their life, go watch Kamal Bonner's senior year huddle tape. It's really fun to watch. He has the speed and athleticism of a safety and just happens to, you know, have the frame of a linebacker. He flies around, hits people. I think the more Wolfpack fans watch Kamal, the more they're going to start to fall in love with him as a player. Because I think he is a potential like big time playmaker in the linebacker room. He's only a redshirt freshman and has plenty of time to grow into that role. But I think you know the older he gets, the better he gets, and he's he's going to become a really really good player in this defense. All right, Noah, uh, we we've kind of talked about the keys to the game and what has to happen. And State needs to take care of the ball. They need to get to the quarterback. That you have to play almost a mistake free game offensively. I think to win this game. And that leads us into our final score predictions. Noah, let me hear it. Who do you have winning NC State's road clash against Cal Berkeley? Yeah, I have Cal winning 24 to 20. I just think NC State won't have enough. It's their eighth straight game in a row, cross country flight, a lot of chips stacked against them, against this Cal team, who has played every single game really, really tight the last three weeks. Yep. So Cal will, will squeak it out 24 20 in Berkeley. I'm with you. Uh, I think the offense is just asking a little too much for them to be completely mistake free against a defense that takes advantage of every mistake. And I think that will come back to bite them again for the, um, you know, second, third week in a row here. And I think Cal will win 21 to 17. I think the defense will do a a fine job. The fact is, like Mendoza puts up good numbers versus the Blitz. He doesn't really get rattled, despite the fact that he has faced seventy-five pressures this year. So it's not it's not a situation where, like against um, Wake Forest, if they against the Blitz, like if you got to Hank Bachmeyer, he was more prone to make mistakes. Like Fernando Mendoza doesn't. So I, I, I think that Cal will be able to minimize mistakes, take advantage of NC State's mistakes, and leave with a win and drop NC State to 3-5 and five on the season and 0-4 and in the ACC. Going into a bye week where maybe we can see some substantive changes for this Wolfpack um, going into the final quarter of the year. All right, folks, that is our show today. I appreciate you all watching and listening. Please check us out on thewolfpacker.com. Again, it is only $5 a month to join and get an annual s- subscription to our site and you know, we've had a bunch of recruiting intel up. Um, like NC State got two commitments over the weekend, including one from four-star offensive tackle to Kai and Whitset. And if you had been on the Wolfpacker.com, that wouldn't have been such a huge surprise because the Pack had been doing a really great job recruiting him, and we were posting about it for the past week. So I encourage you all to go check it out. It's the best place to stay updated on everything to do with the Wolfpack. And um, we will see you on Sunday to talk about everything that – actually ends up happening in this game. So thanks again for watching. We will see you soon.